Hi and welcome to this uh, semi-live uh, stream from uh, Sekte and Sekte Sportcasten. And uh, now we're sitting here with uh, Vesa Virta, and uh, we we've we're doing this interview pre your talk. So so we had a had a a, a brief summary of of uh, what you're going to talk about, but it's some some very exciting historical facts about cryptography and and uh, what went on in the Second World War. Um, could you um, just just briefly uh, touch on 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 some of the brilliance that that was needed in order to to break this uh, this code? Well, the the, the talk was about the Geheimschreiber. Uh, German strategic uh, crypto device used between uh, German troops in Norway and Berlin and then later also German troops in Finland and uh, uh, German em embassy in, in Stockholm. So uh, to break this code uh, there was uh, we, we used a brilliant mathematician called Arne Berling who uh, without any other context, just received some crypto text, yeah. and from that he uh, he was able to uh, decrypt the messages, uh, find out the algorithm that was used to to do the encryption, and also design a machine that could uh, do the decryption, which was later built by an engineer from Alan Erikson. That's that's pretty cool. And, and, and the significance of, of being able to, to uh, intercept those, those messages, that, that meant a lot to Sweden. It, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm a little bit beating my own drum here, but yeah. uh, it, it was a huge part of uh, Sweden being able to, to stay outside the World War II. Yeah. Because they, they had information about uh, German movements, German intentions. Yeah. yeah so, you mentioned that they did show a force. They faked exercises where, uh, where, the, where the Germans would see it and so Yeah, because, because we had, uh, they had information about German troop movements in Norway. So yeah. whenever the Germans uh, went close to the Swedish border, uh, there was some exercise or yeah. some show of a military force on the Swedish side. Um, so showing, then, showing that the so the mighty Swedes seemed even more mighty and even yes. more well prepared. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but but uh, s some uh, some of the reasons uh, behind behind the code being broken were some some pretty abysmal uh, crypto fails. Um, I mean, with, without that, would it would it have been possible still? You think? Uh, I mean, if if we receive this kind of uh, crypto text today, uh, might have been broken with the the amount of computing power that's available, and uh, at least if you had access to a machine, so you yeah. could you know how the machine worked. But uh, back in the day, uh, one of the greatest fail was that. Uh, the different messages were sent with the same key. Yeah. So that could be used to, to find out the workings of the machine. Yeah. And, and th that's, that's also, I mean, it's, it's mind boggling that, that someone can, you know, not only break the code, but, but also actually, you know, figure out the, the algorithm and, and what the machine probably looked like without seeing it. It's, yeah. it's amazing. But yeah. Because if we compare it to the Enigma breaks, yeah. there were other Enigma models known before they started to use the military Enigma version, right? Yes. Yeah. And then here we did analysis, or we! <laughs> our, our nation! <laughs> of course! <laughs> our military yeah. did this. <laughs> I've never felt so nationalistic before, but, but uh, our, uh, our cryptography person solved this without any, any knowledge of a machine. Yeah. And I mean, the what if, if there was no user error, would it have been possible to solve? Maybe? It's, it's alternative history. Yeah. 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 But, but uh, it's, I mean, in the, uh, there's still, uh, I mean, research today on, uh, what's it called, the, 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 
the AES SID and similar where you where you're trying to build in user error prone crypto modes where you're trying to make it impossible for the user to do the errors. So uh, even if we had these user errors and it was so long ago, but but like with uh, AES SIV and uh, deterministic SSD and uh, and all, all the others, you, you still have this. You need to work on how to make it impossible to fail. Yeah, I think the, the easiest w way uh, was just to get rid of the users. But then again, I for one welcome our machine overlords. <laughs> oh. We're Get so, us back on track. Yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry about that. But, but <laughs> you you, uh, you mentioned previously that that uh, th there is a Geheimschreiber in in the Euro Museum. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is it possible for the the public to to come, no. come and watch it? No, it's not. No. Uh, we we have a museum uh, at our headquarters, yeah. uh, which I think is pretty awesome. I mean, I'm a guide there. <laughs> uh, it's not. All the things I do at work, but, but actually I am a museum guy. Um, we we during the pandemic we have a, the museum has been closed. Um, when when we're out of the pandemic, uh, we can have some tours for some visitors, and, and uh, we have uh, earlier years we have invited people from from the SECT audience mm -hmm. to come and, and uh, uh, visit our museum. Cool. And we decided not to do it this year because we don't know when the, we will be able to do it. So, pretty pretty rare machine, though. Uh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Um, another thing I, I was I was wondering um, the the um, uh, it, it was it wasn't until um, after a while they started using the Geheimschreiber. Um, but but were were the previous messages important in in uh, being able to to crack crack yes, the code? Yes, the, the the plain text messages uh, sent by the German operators were important because uh, the cryptanalysis uh, they got a feel for how the Germans communicated mm -hmm. uh, using the Q codes like QRV, uh, meaning that uh, asking are, the are the receiver if that? if yeah. they are hear, hearing him. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was useful, and also uh, because the <coughs> the three fives. Uh, I mean, they they used uh, the the machine used uh, a five bit code, so uh, a, you you had two different modes, so you can shift between the modes, so you you could uh, send both letters and numbers, uh, but those were in different mode modes, so to say. And to take uh, to to um, avoid being uh, in the wrong mode by some uh, static errors in, in transmission, uh, the operators always shifted to letter mode uh, in between words. So if uh, there was some static errors and the, the machine shifted shifted over to uh, figure mode where the, the output would just be garbled, uh, it was just garbled for one word. Mm -hmm. So there was a, a bigram crib that was used between every word. Yeah. And, and I suppose that, that, um, it, that in itself is, uh, is, is a key to be, being able to find a, a pattern and, and, and also to... Uh, Ab absolutely. Uh, and uh, especially if you have several parallel uh, messages encrypted with uh, diff different messages with the same encryption, yeah. and you also can have find this uh, uh, bigram. And if they overlap a bit, then you get a new character and so on, so or, or a new part of the the crypto key. Yeah, I think you mentioned to us before we started recording that uh, this machine was for strategic messages. Yes. So so. Presuming some of our uh, listeners don't know the difference between strategic and tac tactical, what, what would be the difference between a strategic 
encryption machine and the tactical uh, uh, from how they reduce some some, some uh, uh, one, one way to point out the difference is that uh, uh, it was like uh, generals who used uh, the Geheimschreiber and uh, uh, lieutenants who used the Enigma <laughs> so uh, the Enigma was used in the field yeah for something that that was uh, uh, or on a shorter perspective and the Geheimschreiber was used between like the headquarters and, and Berlin yeah uh, so there could be more. Um, I, I was going to say strategic, but uh, yeah. it doesn't explain <laughs> it very well. Yeah, no, 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 I guess one of them would be we, the proud Swedes, we sold this using crypto analysis, uh, but uh, the other analysis method would be get people with guns to a place pick up the machine, pick up the code book, yeah. would be one approach. Uh, Rubber hose cryptanalysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that would be simpler for for the Enigma, right? Because it would be much more machines deployed in... Yeah, uh, in and, and machines deployed out in the woods. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. with the uh, soldiers or, or small groups of soldiers. Yeah, uh, the Geheimschreiber was in, in, in big buildings with... Uh, a lot of armed guards outside. I, I think or, it's or in in the embassy. Yeah. I, I think it's uh, the, I think the YouTube channel is extra credit. It's something where they explain history with with nice uh, animated uh, and I think it was one of one of the big important German ships where where they were trying to figure out where is it because we need to sink it and the crypto analysis persons they find a message where one person is asking if his son has survived and if he's coming back to the base and from based on that they know where the boat is traveling so so uh, i guess the strategic messages you would hopefully get less less loosely or stupid use of them hopefully i i think that <coughs> there was some chatting between operators as well <laughs> so so because the the operators using the the Geheimschreiber they typed in the, the clear text the machine encrypted it and sent the encrypted text uh, to another Geheimschreiber which decrypted it and showed the, the plain text yeah. for for the the operator in the receiving end so we have uh, samples where they were kind of chatting ah. about mm, something not, not yeah, really because one of the things I'm thinking of because we had the one design with the Enigma where where the the type based or whatever we call them saw the crypto text in the tactical machine or the, the, the Enigma machine and in this machine you didn't see the crypto text I mean, I'm just wondering the the Enigma operators would have a little bit like visual indication of bad practices that they would generate repeated uh, ciphertext. Maybe, maybe, but then again, if you're out in the woods and getting shot at, maybe, maybe your focus is on, on something <laughs> else. Yeah, yeah. I, I think it mentioned the, that you could easily reset to the previous password, right? Yes, be, because uh, uh, the, the Geheimschreiber had 10 wheels uh, which were used to set the key and five of those wheels were used were set fixed for every day yeah. well, for each day had one setting of five of the, the wheels so you could uh, uh, you, it was easy to reset the yeah. wheels to, to that position uh, and uh, the operators could also make that uh, make it easy to reset all the wheels and that was used quite a lot so they they reused the the message keys as well the five wheels that were supposed to be like random yeah and it would be to make a new password for every single message would be a very complicated process um, at least uh, not necessarily a very complicated but a bit more complicated yeah, yeah, and, yeah, but, uh, yeah, but you could. If and the uh, German ordnance wasn't uh, always 
in use for for the yeah, but you crypto could, you, operators. You would have the going out of sync problems and such. You would you would need to have some sort. If you would change, uh, I really would need a huge code book, or you would have need. I mean, having one one code for each day that's easy. And if we would have one password for each for each message, we do. Well, no, 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 no. You're looking at me so questionably because you told me before they sent the code. Part of the code they sent in a message. Yeah, it, before they switched to crypto text, they sent the message key in yeah. plain text. Yeah. So theoretically, they could have done that for every single. Yeah. Yes. So you could reset to the to the uh, the day key, but choose new uh, message keys. Cool. And then you would need to convince people to do that work. Yes. Yeah. Amazing part of our history, and it was a pleasure uh, listening to to explain this. Um, and thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. And uh, we're not going to keep you for uh, away from the to the rest of the talks. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much.